Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H. Luxley's Timpani II is an exciting and new, noteworthy addition to the Lucy Award-winning orchestra series. The Timpani II, which we have here today, is the latest RGB AW LED light that boasts improvements and updates to the original Timpani. Along with its updated physical look, the Timpani II is now twice as powerful without diffusion compared to the original Timpani. Aimed at filmmakers and videographers who need a quality LED light with tons of fine control, the Timpani II could be at the heart of your lighting kit. Creativity is unlimited, and with this new release, Luxley continues to help filmmakers and photographers fulfill their creative needs with the ever-growing orchestra series. The Timpani II features a highly accurate and versatile RGB AW LED panel, which enables five lighting modes to offer precise illumination for basically any situation. You can choose from 150 colored filters or 10 customizable animated effects. The mode I'm most interested in trying out is the new HFR mode, designed to eliminate banding and flicker when shooting at high frame rates. The Timpani 2 has a simple yet intuitive on-unit LCD interface for direct control, and when you connect to the Luxley Composer app, you'll gain access to even more powerful features. Let's start with color accuracy. Now, as I just said, the Timpani 2 is twice as powerful without diffusion, and that's thanks to the five die LEDs. The Timpani 2 can be set to an exact color temperature in the traditional CCT mode, ranging from 2800 to 10,000 Kelvin in 50 degree increments. You can emulate any lighting condition from the cool hues of the bright sunlight to the warmth of a tungsten bulb. And this is all thanks to the mixed output of amber and white LEDs. With the addition of red, blue, and green LEDs, it creates a color-rich, stable lux output in HSL mode, RGB mode, and the new CIEXY mode. With a TLCI and CRI rating of over 97, the Timpani 2's color output is extremely accurate. Want to get even more accurate color? Use the Timpani 2 with Luxley's Composer app on your smart device. With the Composer app, you can explore incredible lighting effects via the Bluetooth 5 connectivity, which has a range of up to 100 feet. You'll be able to illuminate your subject with any hue you can imagine and modify it with any one of the 150 digital filters. You can use the eyedropper feature to match any color within an image or video. In CIEXY mode, that's accessed via the Composer app, users can input the exact coordinates along the X and Y axes of the CIE 1931 color space for matching other lighting fixtures. The Composer app also allows users to wirelessly combine and synchronize multiple Luxley Orchestra units, and the latest firmware updates are installed in seconds over Bluetooth 5 using the Composer app. Let's see how you can use the Timpani 2 on set and also tap into the customization and control of the Composer app. All right, welcome everybody. We are here in this eclectic space. We've got all sorts of different rooms here. There's at least three different rooms and there's different things in each room. So we've got artwork on the walls, arcade cabinets, we've got brick walls and LED lighting up top. Now, it's funny I mentioned that because what you're actually seeing right now is already with the Timpani 2 lights helping out in a certain way. So what I've got is the gel mode. I'm using a quarter, I believe, a quarter minus green in this situation. That's just to pull out some of the green spike that I would get from these lights. Now, of course, I don't have a colorimeter on me to prove that that's there, but it does look more pleasing to the eye. And you know what? The important thing here is that these lights allow you to look at the environment around you and let that inform your decision on how to light and how to color those lights. So what you're gonna see here is how we use the different modes to match the surroundings or enhance the environments that are presented to us. So for example, later on you'll see with the arcade cabinets, we're gonna have some nice flashing colors in the background. And we're also gonna try to match some of the effects that we see from some of the practical lights that are in another room. There's even a green screen in the side room over there that we can use one of the gel modes to completely just blast green light on it. So let's get started. We'll take a look through all the modes on the Timpani 2s and have some fun. So right now, I'm not aiming these in any particular place. Uh, we just did a light move, but if you look behind me, there's a wall of clouds here and there's multicolored lighting behind them. Uh, now, I really like this effect. I don't want to overpower it with just neutral white lighting. So what I'd like to do is kind of amplify the effect by having a similar color change flickering out of both lights throughout the room. And so that's, of course, going to give us more 
of that color while keeping the practical effect here, limited to uh, just the little LEDs that are behind here. So really we're enhancing the look. And you know, in a room like this, which has got just everything going on, <laughs> you, could, you could shoot a commercial here, you could shoot a music video, whatever you please. Um, but at the end of the day, again, we're trying to inform that creative decision with what's around us. So again, we're gonna go for the wall here and see what we can do to match the overall look. So we're here in the Luxly Composer app and you can see I'm in CCT mode. It matches what's on the back of the Timpani 2 itself. So right now I'm gonna just switch that to 5600 just as a base and we're gonna go over to the effects mode and go into the color chase effect. Now this just lets me go spinning basically through a range of hues. So I can go through the entire wheel, zero to 360, uh, and then just hit play right here. And you can already see behind me that there's an exaggerated version of this effect blasting against the wall. And it's actually identical on both lights, or at least it should be. Let me see. Yeah. If you look at me right now, I'm being covered in the light, the colorful rotating light that's coming out of both of these. And I can change it too. I can change, we'll see this in real time, I can change the lightness of that so that they're a little less saturated. And we might want that so that we can indeed balance how much light is on me as the subject the background, of course, and how much color is coming from the practical light. I don't want to overpower them, I just want to complement them. So if I go to lightness 100%, for example, it's basically just white light. In fact, yeah, you don't see any color anymore. So if I back this down to, let's say, let's say 50%, that's as low as we can go on there. And then I can do time per loop. So it's essentially the loop speed. I'm gonna change this to 20, you can actually type it in. I'm gonna change it to 10 seconds. And now the loop is much slower. So it should allow these again to punch through while still giving an occasional blast of ever-changing light. So good for a commercial, music video, anything where you really wanna match those colorful incidental lights you've got going on. So I'm just setting up a shot here and this wall is looking wild. We killed the house lights, so now it's just pure color blasting on the walls off of the ceiling, and of course you get the amazing lights in the back. So what I actually might do is reverse some of that saturation that I brought in before, just so that our subject can have some neutral lighting as well. And then I might boost the intensity up. Here we go. So now we're getting kind of a healthier exposure. All right, so we've got our subject here. Nick is looking great. And uh, you know, you could do something like a fashion shoot here. If somebody's trying out clothes, great option. Action. Perfect. Amazing. Great. And you can see we've got, it doesn't fully match because these of course are not programmed to the LED practical lights, but we're emphasizing the effect. These are both in sync. These are completely controlled together. So I can balance it as much as possible. Right now, I think I'm gonna wanna bump it a little bit more. Uh, let's go a little less saturation and a little more intensity. In fact, if I just go 100% intensity and 100% lightness, that's pure white. So this is, you know, normal. There's no uh, complimenting that we're doing here. I'm gonna bring it down to, let's say, 84, nah, let's do 77, there we go. So pretty colorful still, but not overpowering the color of the background lights. So we're just moving back into the main room here for a bit because I wanna use this pool table. And we're gonna go for some kind of bar look. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a very glossy polished look or if it's gonna be like a dark, dingy environment. One thing that's informing my decision though is that there is a purple wall behind the camera right now. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna match that color necessarily, but what I am gonna do is try to get more color into the shot that doesn't bring attention to that wall. Um, so that means we're gonna have to use, probably use some highly saturated colors. We're gonna throw something, maybe a magenta or a pink coming from that side, while the other side could be lit with a green or a blue perhaps. Uh, just something to keep it looking very stylized. And of course, take advantage of the fact that we're in a kind of multi-purpose room. 
we're gonna have a different setup for this afterwards. So we're gonna use the HSV and the CIE modes to accomplish this. All right, so we're setting up shot right now. Uh, and I've already got two of the lights up here. I have not killed the house lights, so let us do just that. If we go over to CCT mode again, that I can reset these lights. You can actually see the color temperature changing as I hit the preset here. Um, so let's go into single though. We're gonna go into single, not group and we're gonna independently change these. So I'm gonna to go to CCT here, and that's the other light over there. What I wanna do is do HSL on the light over there, and we're gonna go into the purplish, pinkish area. If you actually look at the light, you can see it changing in real time according to how I use the slider on the app. So I'm gonna go for something that kind of matches that color on the wall. So the exact light source is somewhat ambiguous. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the light behind me and also go into HSL. Or I could even do RGB or XY mode, which does color gamut. Now this is really cool because you can stick within a gamut presented by your destination space. So, you know, we're gonna go for sRGB and you can see the color already impacting my hand as I go across the screen. So I want something pretty green, maybe slightly more on the yellow side. So kind of looks like bar lighting perhaps. So we're gonna go stick right there. And if you look over at Nick, he's got some nice color on him. So let's go see what that looks like on our cinema camera. So we've got a nice little master shot here. And what this lets me do is see exactly how things look. So I'm changing things on the fly right now in the CIE XY mode. We're blocking the shot as it is. So I'm having Nick walk through. And if you look in the shot here, uh, you can see it changing as I move the slider here. Um, you can see, of course, the light is changing too. So now I want some contrast with the purple we've got. I'm gonna go sort of like a teal. We'll go like that. And I'm gonna bump the intensity a little bit. That's a little harsh. You can kind of see it on the side of the pool table. So I'm gonna bring it down. And then we'll go over to the pink light here. And we'll see how saturated we can make that. That's a little too much. So I'm gonna bring it down. and shift the hue a bit, 52%. Okay, cool, so I like it where it is right now. And uh, yeah, let's see. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to the arcade setup over here. Now, there's a few things I wanna do with this setup. So one is I gotta create a colorful environment. I wanna make it look like in the close-up shots, for example, that there's surrounding ambient light, the flickering and flashing of other arcade cabinets that you can imagine being off frame somewhere. I want that bouncing off the walls. I want it bouncing off Nick's face. And then, for a different shot, I wanna simulate what it's like from the perspective of the arcade monitor itself. So we're gonna use a special mode for that. Uh, that's a TV effect, basically, that simulates what it's like to have that flickering TV ambient light projected straight on their face. It's an interesting effect, so we're gonna try it out here, see what kind of looks we can create. Uh, we're in the Luxley Composer app. We're gonna connect the lights. I've already had these grouped before, as you saw, but we gotta reconnect them every time you turn the app off. So. As you can see, I have them already in group mode. For this demo though, I wanna go single mode. And that's because I can control different types of effects per light. I wanna get different effects. So let's go to effect. Now I thought that fireworks would actually be great for this because fireworks uh, maintains different colors and you can keep it at a pretty good interval while not being too flickery like a strobe light. Perfect, so now you can see, if you look up at Nick's face, you can see the occasional flicker 
of a game, some other arcade cabinet, it could be a machine, any other kind of machine that has a light source. And I can, of course, boost the intensity of this so it really goes up on him and it lights up the side of his face periodically. So I like this look. Now, for the backlight, the one that's behind him, I'm also gonna go into effects, but I think for that one, I'm gonna change this to lightning. There we go. So now you can see there's a lighting effect, lightning effect rather, that happens behind him. And they're all happening out of sync with each other. So this could be a completely unrelated situation. Now, for something like this, you probably want um, a fill light as well, just to keep things um, more, you know, evenly lit between shots. So for that, what you might want to do instead is something like fire. So now what I added on the first light was the fire mode. So this gives you just like a very lightly flickering, but not ever off uh, fire effect. And the cool thing is you can choose different types of light sources, candle, campfire, bonfire, whoops. Uh, combined with different wind conditions, which essentially emphasizes the flicker rate. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it a candle and windy. And if you look up, you can see it gently flickering against the wall, but it's never turned off. And it has a certain warmth to it because it is fire. So I like this because it provides that same effect, but it doesn't lose the uh, ambient light that you'd want. Okay, so we're actually rolling here. Uh, what we're trying to simulate is Nick actually playing the game from the perspective of the game cabinet itself. So what I wanted to do was simulate the flickering light, the slightly changing light that you would see from a TV going onto your face. Now, it could be different depending on what kind of screen you're trying to simulate. In this case, I'm looking at an arcade cabinet, so I'm thinking maybe something a little cooler. I've actually thrown the base CCT here all the way, almost to the max. Uh, so like 9,300, almost 9,400K. Uh, and then what we have here is I can do the tint. So I have tint all the way to magenta and you can see it on the wall here as it changes. So what we have here is I've maximized changes per minute and the randomization of changes. So you can kind of see it on the wall a little bit. Every so often it will go up a couple of steps or go down a couple of steps in both color temperature and intensity. Um, so it's simulating you know, the scene changes that might happen in a TV show and how that would reflect off of a face. There we go, just dropped a lot, went back up. And so combined with the surrounding light, you can get sort of a look of the TV plus the surrounding environment to help sell the look. Now, I would love to throw like three more of these lights in here to really splash some light but this gives you an idea of what you can do. Okay, so now we're setting up a completely different shot. I'm gonna to return to the fire effect and you'll see why in a sec. Nick over here has his hordes of cash, just tons of money. Uh, and of course, anybody that greedy needs to have a nice underlit evil light source to show just who they are. So uh, what we have here, the house lights are on currently. I'm gonna turn them off in a sec, but I got the light over there providing a, uh, an underlit source and it's set to a light flicker on the fire preset. Um, and I'll show you in a sec. And then on the left over here, kind of approximating like a moonlight type situation, I've got a very purple uh, HSL mode engaged over here, just giving him that light amount of blue on the side of his face. This shot does need to be refined a bit, um, mainly because the source is obviously visible in the wide shot here, as you can see. What I would probably do is pull the source out a bit, since it is actually quite bright anyway. That way it's out of frame for the wide. And now it just looks like there's candlelight. But of course, the shot still doesn't have, oh wow, look, he's, he's packing it up. So now the shot doesn't actually have a candle in it. So you could imagine this being a fireplace, or if we wanted to, we could just punch in, which I'm gonna do, and you can then imagine it being uh, a candle, for example. Now, right here in this wide, I'm just gonna cut and then move in so you can get a better view of the effect. So we're rolling here now. And let's see, I wanna see you counting that money. Tilting up, 
You can see here, really nice streak of light on the plant behind them. You know, we're also assisted by the fact that these walls are painted red, so set design goes a long way. So I just changed this over to Breeze, um, and that is probably a little more appropriate for this scene because the windy was just a bit too windy for an indoor type of shot. I thought that the the frequency with which it was flickering was just a little too fast. But you could also change intensity here, and it still maintains that same, wow, that's a bright fire you got inside the house. <laughs> that's from burning all that cash. Or we could bring it down and keep it as a very dim candle in the distance. And you know, you can still see the effect if you pan over here to the light, you can see that it is modulating in both intensity and saturation. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have Nick throw his wads of cash into the imaginary fire, and I'm gonna manually ride the intensity of the light so that as he throws it, the fire grows stronger and stronger. So in this sense, you can basically choreograph your lighting to the action. So, all right, we're rolling and action. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> That's a shot right there. Okay, so we've got a green screen behind us as you can see and Nick is apparently a man of many talents so we're gonna put him in front of it and perhaps make a really embarrassing music video. But before we begin, let me just say we really don't have enough lights to be doing this right now so just keep that in mind. We have one light lighting Nick right now and one light lighting the green screen right now. Ideally, we would have at least two lights lighting just the green screen to keep things even. We're gonna see how good we can get it though. And the reason is, is because even though there is a light on here already, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a boost. So let's go over to the light and take a look. So what we can see here, first off, we haven't really taken a look at this actual body of the light. Um, I gotta say, it is, very solid, it is almost surprisingly well built. Um, and there's a couple of changes here over from the original timpani. Probably the biggest change you'll notice is that the power connector has been moved to the bottom here and it's now in a recessed fashion. In fact, all of the connections are down there, so this is great. Uh, this keeps the back nice and clear. It also means that nothing, like let's say if you stack lights uh, in a bag, for example, nothing is going to push up against the body. Uh, so it keeps things neater and uh, less prone to breaking. Uh, also, very similar menu system to before, but now, um, you know, some of the functions have been enhanced on the mobile app versus the screen here. But what I'm about to show you is accessible just through the modes here. So you can see HSL mode and then gel mode. Now, from before, we had the, uh, the eighth minus green, but we're actually gonna do something called, let's see, chroma key green, and that just, shines pure green light, you can see my hand here, onto whatever surface you can imagine. So that enhances the already green screen. Now I have a flag here to prevent some spill from going to Nick, but it's gonna be hard to avoid all of it. Uh, needless to say, this should still be a lot better than just keeping it as pure white light, considering that we only have one light. Uh, so I'm actually gonna see what this looks like in the camera. So if we're looking at the monitor here, you can see this is pretty even, and even on the waveform monitor here, um, some of this could be a bit brighter. You can kind of see the fall off here, but the rest of it's very nice and even. I'm gonna both reposition the light and then also show you what the difference is between regular CCT, I guess you could say pure white light, and chroma key green gel light. So let's go and see the difference. So first, I'm gonna just pan this over just slightly and reposition it so I can get a little bit more coverage. And then let's switch back to CCT. So that is just regular old white light. This is 5600 light. So this is just regular CCT light. This is not the chroma key green gel. And unfortunately, you know, not only is it less even, but parts of it are desaturated compared to other parts. Uh, if we're gonna have any unevenness, we should at least try to have the same saturation, which is why 
the gel mode is so effective. So now, even though parts of it, like the lower right region of the frame underneath the guitar neck, are a little darker, at least they're still solid green, as is the upper right region where it's very brightly exposed. And the flag is doing a great job here of keeping most of the spill off of Nick. So the real question is, how is this gonna look after it's keyed? One more time, I'm gonna go to 5600 Kelvin CCT mode. We're gonna try keying that. And then we're gonna go to chroma key green and see how that looks. There's more than a few lighting modes in the Timpani 2. HFR, or high frame rate mode, allows users to shoot at high frame rates without that unwanted banding. HFR mode sets one of the five diodes to remain constantly on, so you don't have to stop to calculate frame rates when you're trying to capture that perfect slow motion shot. This is crucial because you don't want to see the typical cycling of the light when shooting high frame rates. While anything from 24 to 60 FPS is usually fine under any light, things can get tricky when going to, say, 96, 120, or even higher frame rates. Effects mode. The Timpani 2 has 10 pre-programmed effects in effects mode with adjustable parameters. Recreate some of your favorite effects like the distant glimmer of fireworks, the piercing blue and red of a police car, or the warm flicker of a campfire. Plus, adjustable parameters allow you to customize each effect to your specific needs. HSL mode lets you dial up almost any hue by scrolling through the entire color spectrum in one degree increments. You can also adjust saturation as well as the base white point. Never settle for just close enough colors when you can set the precise color you need. Filter mode. Now in filter mode, you can use 150 different digital gel filters that are preloaded onto the Timpani 2. Filter mode lets you adjust the color temperature setting in 50 degree increments, and thanks to filter mode, you don't have to bring your gels with you for your shoot anymore. But perhaps more useful to DPs is the ability to think of lighting in terms of filter adjustments. You can perform minus green or throw on a CTO or CTB filter to match another light. So let's talk about what's in the box. The Timpani 2 is a true 1x1 RGB AW LED light. Coming out of Norway, it has an updated sturdy design for ease of portability, and it feels incredibly sturdy and professional to the touch. It's 3.5 inches deep, weighs only 9 pounds, and now has an integrated carry handle making it much easier to transport and store. The AC power is now on the bottom of the light making it easier to access, and uses a 4-pin XLR input. Increased lux output using a 120 volt power source makes the Timpani 2 brighter than its predecessor. The Timpani 2 can also run on V-mount battery power, which is now located on the power supply. It prioritizes the connected power sources and seamlessly switches between them. A modified heatsink design dissipates heat and channels airflow, keeping the Timpani 2 cool and quiet. It also has an updated and improved removable diffuser. This helps soften, smooth, and broaden the beam of light to flatter your subjects with a single shadow and diffuse wraparound light. The Timpani 2 also includes a sturdy all-metal yoke with a 5 8 inch receiver for convenient light stand mounting. The yoke also features tilt control and height adjustment for balancing your light. And looking back at the LCD display, you can adjust brightness and color and also switch between modes with the touch of a button. Lastly, the Timpani 2 is DMX512 compatible with its 5-pin XLR I.O. connectors so you can daisy chain your lights to a lighting grid. The Timpani 2 is built with creatives in mind. Not only are they precisely manufactured to Luxley's exact specifications, but each light comes with its own individual photometrics chart that clearly displays the light accuracy, consistency, and brightness. The Timpani 2 opens up all sorts of options with the versatile and accurate RGB AW LEDs. Whether you're using the conductor app, the 150 digital colored gels, or one of the many, many effects, the Timpani 2 will help keep your creativity truly unlimited. How will you use the Timpani 2? Let us know in the comments below. This is Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.